This video is all about substituting into formulas, which actually is a reasonably straightforward process, but it can seem a little mysterious, you know, until you've got to grips with it. So in this video, I'm going to show you lots of examples that are going to go through all the kind of pitfalls and different sorts of situations that you might come across. But really, at the core, substituting into formulas is just all about replacing the letters in a formula with the numbers. And that's really all you ever have to do. So let's get stuck into some questions. Welcome to Maths Kitchen. I want to make it as easy and as quick as possible for you to improve your maths. So even though these videos can sometimes be quite long, if you just need help with a particular type of question, you can jump straight to that. And I put links to those in the description. There are also questions for you to practice at mathskitchen.com. It's all interactive, so you can enter your answers on the screen and you know straight away whether you've got them right or not, and you can see a model answer if you need a bit of extra help. Use the formula z equals x add two to find z when x equals seven. So all we're being asked to do is replace the x in the formula with seven, because it's telling us that x is equal to seven. We now have a numerical value for x. That's what we have to do. So we just rewrite it with the number. So z is equal to nine. Use the formula l equals seven m to find l when m equals five. So seven m just means seven multiplied by m, seven times n. So to find l, we do seven times whatever m is. And it tells us in the question that m is equal to five. So l is going to be equal to seven times five, because m is five, and that's 35. That's it. Use the formula l equals mn to find l when m equals seven and n equals four. Well. When we have m n written like that, it means m times n. So to find out what l is, all we have to do is multiply m times n. And the question is telling us which numbers we should use for m and n. So m is seven, n is four. So we just write it out like this. L equals, so seven times four, which is 28. Use the formula L equals 2M minus N to find L when M equals 5 and N equals 2. So we're going to work out what L is by replacing M and N with the actual numbers that they tell us, with the 5 and the 2. So don't forget when it says 2M, that means 2 times M. So L then is going to be equal to 2 times M, in other words, 2 times 5, minus n, in other words, minus two, because n is two. So two times five is 10, take away two is eight. So L is equal to eight. Use the formula L equals m plus n squared to find L when m equals 10 and n equals six. Okay, so we're just gonna replace the letters m and n with the numbers that we've been given. So L, is equal to, m is 10, right, so 10 plus n squared, n is six, so six squared. So L will be 10 add six squared, six squared just means six times six, doesn't it, which is 36. So 10 add 36, which is 46. So L is equal to 46. Use the formula P equals R squared plus six to find P when r equals negative nine. Okay, so all we have to do is rewrite the formula, but instead of using r, we're gonna use negative nine, because they're telling us that that r is equal to negative nine. So p is equal to negative nine squared. I'm just gonna put that in brackets there. You don't have to do that, but it's good practice, I would say. Add six. If ever you're squaring a negative using a calculator, you do need to put it in brackets like that. Okay, so what is negative nine squared? That's a question. Well, it's negative nine times negative nine, isn't it? So we're multiplying two negative numbers together. We know that that's gonna give us a positive answer. So it's 
81, positive 81. And then I have to add 6. So 81, add 6, and that gives me 87. If a equals 3b squared, find a when b equals 5. So we've got the b in the formula there, and we're just going to replace that with the 5. So don't forget that that means 3 times 5 squared. So a is equal to 3 times 5 squared. 3b squared means 3 times b squared, and b is 5. So it's 3 times 5 squared. This is one of those bid mass situations. You must do the squaring first. So you do the 5 squared, which is 25, and then you multiply that by 3. So 25 times 3 is 75. If P equals Q plus R, find P when Q equals 5 and R is equal to negative 13. Right, we've got our little formula. All we're going to do is replace the letters that we've been given there, the Q and the R, with the actual numbers that we're told that they are worth. So P is equal to Q, well Q is 5, plus R, and R is negative 13. So 5 add negative 13. I'm going to put my negative 13 in brackets. I don't have to. It's just a good habit that I've got into. So 5 add negative 13. Well, when you're adding a negative number, you're, you're moving down the number line, aren't you? So I've got to move down 13 places from 5. Well, if I move down 5 places, that gets me to 0. And then I've got to move down another 8 places. So that will take me down to negative 8. So P is equal to negative 8. Use the formula r equals 2q plus 3p to find r when q equals 4 and p equals negative 11. So we've got our formula. We're just going to replace the letters in our formula with the numbers that we've been given. So 2q just means 2 times whatever q is. We're told here that q is 4, so 2 times 4. And 3p just means 3 times whatever p is. We're told that p is negative 11. So r is equal to... 2 times 4, add 3 times negative 11. Right, well, 2 times 4 is 8. And I'm adding, well, 3 times negative 11 is negative 33. So we're adding on a negative. We're going to be moving down the number line 33 places. So if we move down the number line 8 places, that will take us down to 0. And then I need to move another 25 places because we've got to move a total of 33 places. So 8 gets me to 0, 25 more, and we have taken away 33. So it is negative 25. R is negative 25. If P equals Q minus R, find P when Q is equal to negative 4. And R is equal to negative 11. All right, we've got some negatives here, haven't we? So all we're going to do, replace the letters in our formula with the actual numbers that we've been given. So to find, to find P, we're going to do P is equal to, well, Q is negative 4. So negative 4 minus and R is negative 11. So negative 4 minus negative 11, just putting my, in fact, I'll put them, I should put them both in brackets, shouldn't I? negative 4 minus negative 11. When you are subtracting a negative number, as we are here, we're subtracting that negative 11, that actually has the effect of adding that number on. It moves you up the number line 11 places. So if we're starting at negative 4 and we're moving up the number line 11 places, well, if we move up four places, it takes us to zero, and we've got another seven places still to go. So we're going to end up at seven. So P is equal to 7. If R equals 5Q minus 7P, find R when Q equals 2 and P equals negative 6. Okay, well, we're told that Q is 2. So R is going to be equal to, well, it's 5 times Q. Well, Q is 2. So 5 times 2. And then minus 7 times P. P is negative 6, so minus 7 times negative 6. Minus 7 times negative 6. Let me put that in brackets. Right, let's work those out. So 5 times 2 is 10. 
It's a nice easy one. And I'm taking away 7 times negative 6. That's negative 42. So I'm taking away negative 42. And when you subtract, take away a negative, it's the same as adding on, isn't it? It's going to move you up the number line. So 10 add 42, really, um, which is 52. The formula C is equal to 5 over 9, and then in brackets F minus 32 can be used to convert temperatures from degrees Fahrenheit, that's the F, to degrees Celsius, that's what the C represents. Use the formula to convert 212 degrees Fahrenheit to degrees Celsius. Right, so we're just going to rewrite the formula and we're going to substitute in the number that we've been given, which is 212. And that is going to tell us what the temperature is in degrees Celsius. So C, the temperature in degrees Celsius, is going to be equal to 5 ninths multiplied by... I'm going to replace that F with 212, so 212 minus 32. I'm going to try and do this without a calculator, actually. So that means 5 ninths multiplied by whatever inside that bracket. So 212 take away 32. 212, if I take away 2, is 210. And then if I take away 30, that's 180. So it's 5 ninths multiplied by... 180. Well, if I just use a sort of mental method, I know that 1 ninth multiplied by 180, that's the same as a ninth of 180. That's 180 divided by 9, in other words. So 1 ninth of 180 is 20. So 5 ninths of 180 is going to be 5 times bigger. It's going to be 100. So 212 degrees Fahrenheit is 100 degrees Celsius. Boiling point. So I quite enjoy doing uh, those sorts of calculations in my head sometimes. It all depends on the situation. It's absolutely fine, of course, if it's a calculator paper, to get your calculator out and you could have just typed it in exactly as it was written there. Um, or you could have used a more formal written method, but I quite enjoy doing them like that. So that's how you substitute numbers into formulae. Um, I hope I've covered most of the situations that you would come across with that. And it, as I say, it's a reasonably straightforward process, isn't it? The biggest thing probably to look out for is, as with lots of things, is making sure you're really good with your negative numbers because they can catch you out if you're not careful. Um, if you found a video useful, please check out some of my other videos and you can do all that nice stuff. Give it a like and a subscribe to the channel all that kind of stuff. Uh, hopefully I will see you in another video and thank you for watching.